Hey, good morning, Lifestone family. It's so good to have you joining us here this morning. If you're joining us online, welcome, welcome. If you would like to be a part of this pre-recording, awesome worship setting service, and you can join these guys over here, please come along to Life Zone at 7.30 a.m. is when we usually kick off, but it'll be great to have you down here, be a part of the live crowd and audience. But we continue on to our James series and exciting James series as we dive deep into it, but we're going to go into a time of worship. So let's stand and posture our hearts before the Lord. We're going to go into a time of uh, communion and just an extended time of worship. Um, I think it's important for us that we posture ourselves before the Father and surrender to Him, mate, because He's worth it. He's on, He's on the cross. He's sovereign. He's through everything, amongst everything, for everything. And so I just want to read out Isaiah. Isaiah 41.10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. 
Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And as we as we go into our time of giving, as we time go to our time of uh, communion, giving, it's sometimes when we think about obedience, we can think of it as just like a little checklist, like check, I'm being obedient today. But obedience is more about what, how the Father has designed us, and He wants us to honor Him with everything that we have. And as we as we hold on to stuff, we don't want to do that. So even our finances, God wants us to release that to Him so that He may bless everything that is in our lives. And sometimes money, we can be really protective. Oh, no, this is mine. I've worked hard for it. But everything that we have belongs to the Lord. And everything that we have is a blessing that we are so privileged to have. And so as we take our, our tithing, and maybe you've never tithed before, but I just want to say that 100% of your tithing as you give is better than not having it blessed at all. And as we give our heart, we're saying, God, here's my sacrifice to you. Here's my heart to you, Lord. And I just really pray, Father, that you would do a blessing with that. And as we go into our time of communion, as we partake of the bread and drink from the juice, that is the body that was broken and the blood that was shed, the covenant that he made, once and for all, that we may be free because the Son set free, it was free indeed. That the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. There is freedom in His name. There is freedom on the cross. There is freedom when we partake of this communion. And so I just want to pray into our communion, into our giving this morning. Father, we thank you so much that you are a good God. We thank you so much that there is freedom in the cross, that there is freedom in your name. And as we come before you, Lord, I pray, Father, that our hearts would just be just overjoyed, just so in awe of who you are, Lord. And there is nothing that we could have done to earn your grace. There is nothing that we could have done to earn your, your love and your mercy, but yet you freely made a way, that you made a way for all of us, Lord, that whoever comes to you, Lord, be free. And so, Father, I just really pray as we give of our offering that there is freedom in that, Lord. The saying, Lord, I want you to have every single part of me, Lord. I don't want to hold anything back from you. And so, Father, as I bring my offering to the storehouse, I trust, Lord, that your will be done. As I partake of the bread that was the bread and the juice, the body that was broken, the blood that was shed, Lord, is a reminder of the covenant that you made to restore everything, Lord, to restore everything. And so we don't worship you because we have to, Lord. We worship you because we want to. We don't come before you because it's a chore, Lord. We come before you because it's such a blessing to us, Lord that we can be in the presence of the Father, of a God that's not distant, but He's up close and personal. He calls us sons. He calls us daughters. And He draws us in, even when we push Him away. And so, Father, we come before You with hearts of adoration, with hearts of praise, Lord, with hearts of thanksgiving. say, Lord, have your way. Right here, right now, have your way. Let your spirit move Lord, wherever we are listening. Let your spirit move, Lord. Hey church, it's probably quite obvious that I'm not at LifeZone. This week I started the pastoral transformation course with Richard Black from Mind Health. It's a one-year part-time course and the tagline on their website says, designed to bring transformation personally and professionally. You know what? So far it has been good. It has been really good. Good like bacon with eggs good. It's been that good. But seriously, 
You have probably heard the, the saying, the expression that hurt people hurt people and healed people heal people. Well, I've got a whole lot of healing to do and this course will be really great to help me in that. It's just like my back injury really. Uh, there was all these medical, there are all these medical professionals that use their knowledge, their experience, me, and I believe Jesus to bring healing to my back. And praise God, my back is getting better. I'm getting more mobile, more flexible. Every stronger, every week is just a little bit better. And just like that, Richard is working with me and 26 other leaders from around New Zealand using this course, his knowledge, experience, the Word of God, me and Jesus to bring emotional healing and transformation in my life, both personally and professionally. I have been wondering how you're all doing. I've kind of been scanning with my peepers, the generations, and I've got to tell you that I see the discomfort in the unfamiliar. I understand it's not easy. I don't find it easy, this situation that we're in. But I have been hearing really good testimonies, great testimonies, stories of Connect Group leaders making the most of this COVID protection framework in, in red. Some have moved their groups to meeting on Sunday mornings in homes. Others are meeting in, at Oak Lane, at Life Zone. And they're kind of watching online. I'm so incredibly thankful to be able to have the privilege of being able to stay connected through church online. Others are enjoying a meal together, praying for each other, with each other, celebrating things like birthdays, anniversaries, the kind of life, um, I guess, milestones. And I think that's really, really good. Last weekend, a couple of connect groups combined together and they decided that all these families would get together and spend the day at the lake. What a cool idea. Others are intentionally making the most of this situation, this season that we're in, by having people that are the same age and stage as they are in life in their homes. All of this has made me think, what a great perspective. I mean, transparently, I miss having all of the people, all of you, all of us, in one building at one time, lifting one sacrifice of praise to Jesus who's worthy of all praise. And then also I really miss just preaching to one audience. February and March at Life Zone are usually really great ramping months. School's back. We've had church camp. Oh, missed church camp this year. We've had that. And then we kind of usually, here we go. We just take off and ramp. We're kind of not in that privileged place this year. But I have to tell you that I have had some of the best conversations, the best prayer times and fun times in small groups. And so let's not allow the situation that we are in to rob us of what God has for us in this season. Let's not allow the situation we are in to rob us of what God has for us in this season. The church is people, right? It's not the building. And we have been blessed to be a blessing. God has called us to live on mission, helping people, helping others to live for Jesus and share his love. How might you be a blessing to someone else at this time? Would you be prepared to pray and ask God, God, how would you like me to bless someone else? I've been hearing testimonies of people doing that, but I promise you that if you ask God that, he will answer. He will lead you in how you can be a blessing to someone else. And in that, if you have the courage and the faith and the confidence to step into the blessing that God has got for you for someone else, I really believe my experiences, the word tells us that you will be blessed. I want to thank you for your patience. I want to thank you for the grace that you're extending to us as shepherds at this time. Thank you for praying for us. And if any of you want to meet me or any of the other elders, just contact the office and Michelle will arrange a time. Last week we looked at James, James chapter 1 verses 1 through 4. And what James did there is he really laid a foundation for the rest of his letter. 
He revealed that the Christian life is about cultivating a deeper trust in God as trials come our way. In fact, those trials can be exactly what we need in order to learn to trust God more than what we previously did. And I really love um, verse 4 of James 1. It says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Do you know, it is an absolute awesome thought a thought that I believe brings joy, that we, that you and I, we get to partner with God in his maturing process of us. What a privilege that we get to cooperate with God in his maturing process of us. God is working in our lives, often through trials and difficulties and hardships to build our faith, character, and integrity. And now as we come into the same chapter, chapter 1, verses 5 to 8, James begins to describe what it looks like to trust God in a wide variety of circumstances, not just in the trials and the difficulties, but in a whole host of experiences, circumstances that we have in life. And so let's read James chapter 1 verses 5 to 8. And if you have a Bible with you, I think it's going to help to have that Bible open next to you as we kind of unpack that. It reads like this. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. The person, that person, should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. I'd like to pray. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you are alive and that you are powerful. I pray that you would Use your word today to teach us, to rebuke us, to correct us. That you would use this time to train us for righteousness. So take these few moments of time, Lord. Take your word and equip us so that we would be ready, that we would be equipped for every good work that you have for us. I pray this in Jesus' precious name. And all the people said, Amen. Hey, uh, we talked about joy in difficult circumstances, developing perseverance, and how that perseverance leads to maturing. This week, we want to focus on the wisdom that God grants us in order to grow our faith. I like this, but I want you to notice in those verses that God does not leave us in the middle of those trials and difficulties just to figure it out all by ourselves. He doesn't go, he doesn't say, he doesn't do this, hey, you'll be right, mate. Give it your best shot. Bless you. Catch you later. See you then. I hope it goes good. No, God doesn't do that. He's in those trials. He's in them in the beginning of them, in the middle of them. And as we pop out or as we crawl out the other end, God is in those trials. And when we ask him for wisdom, he will give it generously without finding fault. Oh, man, I I want us to... Meditate. I want that to percolate, just to sit and marinate in us for a little while. And so we're in a trial. Things are tough, and we don't know how we're going to endure it, how we're going to get through this trial that we would be in. And in this trial, there's decisions to be made, small decisions, big decisions, but every decision has a ramification. It has an action that would come off those decisions. How will I get through this? I wonder if you've ever been there. I wonder if you're there now. You might want to share that in the chat or you might want to share it with those that are around you. But consider sovereign God, all-powerful, ever-present, unchanging, all-knowing, kind, patient, full of grace and truth, the Father of compassion, the wonderful counselor, the Prince of peace, holy and just, the healer and the one who is love. He says... He says, ask for wisdom and I will give it to you 
generously. I'm going to give you that, God, he's, I'm going to give you that wisdom generously. And it means here to give it liberally, to give it unbridled, without reservation. We've got to catch this. Don't, don't miss this. God is not a stingy God. That is the opposite of his very character. He is generous by nature. The CEB, that's the common English translation, it says this, that God whose nature is to give. How good. How good is that, that his nature is to give? And I say, really, God, are you serious? Because, God, there's a bit going on on planet Earth at the moment. There's wars and there's rumors of wars. There's a global pandemic and there's disease and there's famine and there's a whole host of things that kind of haven't really been around to, in the scale that they are around now and they're escalating. Things like mind health and suicide and self-harm and criminal activity, gender identity and sexuality. These issues in society, they're kind of coming up and they're escalating at an alarming rate. And so God, are you serious that if I stop for a moment and ask you for wisdom, that you've got time and that you've got capacity to give it to me, to give it to in insignificant little me. You're going to give me wisdom generously. And by the way, Lord, there is a whole lot of people on this planet and there's a whole lot of stuff that's going on right now. And yet, if I ask you for wisdom, you will give it to me. God, I'm, I'm only a small person. I'm just a small person in a really big world. Have you really got time for me? Will you actually engage in my pain and in my hurt and my struggle? And will you generously give me the wisdom that I need in the middle of this trial, in the middle of whatever circumstance that I am in? And God says, yeah, I'll give it to you. I just want you to ask. I want you to ask me. You know, we spent the first, I think, five or seven weeks of 2022 teaching on prayer. And when God says, I want you to ask, he is really saying, I want you to pray. That's how we ask, right? We pray. We ask. We have a conversation. We're in relationship with, with God and we ask him and then we listen. We ask and we listen. And God's answer to all of that, to our feeling of insignificance and that God might be too busy and that there's other big things that he really needs to attend to more than little of me, he says, yes, I love you that much. When you ask, I will give you wisdom and I will give it to you generously. Charles Spurgeon, he said this, we are all so ready to go to books, to go to men, to go to ceremonies, to go to anything except to God. Consequently, the text does not say, let him ask books, nor ask priests, but let him ask of God. Asking God for wisdom is evidence that you trust him. Asking God for wisdom is evidence that we trust him. When you ask, he will give, and it's evidence that our trust is in him. James says that we should ask for wisdom and not doubt that God will do it. He will respond by giving that wisdom without finding fault. I love this. I really do. I, let it sink in because it's, it's phenomenal. In other words, he doesn't look at all of our previous foolish or stupid choices and decide that we are not worthy of receiving wisdom generously from him. What an amazing promise. 
because I've got to tell you that I have made some dumb choices. Yeah, I, I have. I've made some dumb choices. And I'm not talking about years ago, you know, way back then when I made those dumb choices. I'm not even talking about months ago or, or last week. I, I've made dumb choices this week. What about you? Have, have you made dumb choices? But often for me, I think those dumb choices are because I have not stopped long enough, paused and connected with my creator and said, God, I need your wisdom. Would you give it to me generously? But God does not hold that against me. He gives generously whatever my track record looks like. Come on, church. I wish you were here because we'd be hooting and hollering about that right now. God does not hold that against us, the stupid choices that we have made. He gives generously whatever our track record look, looks like. God of the universe, he stands by ready and willing to give abundant wisdom to those who ask based on their trust and confidence in him, not on their previous record. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Hey, how do you think that God will provide answers to those questions, that question of wisdom? You might want to share what you think, how his answers will come in the chat or again with the people that you're with right now or maybe in days or weeks ahead. I've thought of three kind of ways that God would answer our prayers, that request for wisdom. And the first one is this, it's this, it's through his word, the Bible. God will give us answers through his word, the Bible. Psalm 19 verse 7 says, the instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. And so he will give wise the simple, he will give answers through his word, the Bible. And then these next two things, I believe that God can give answers to us through these next two things. But the answers that you would get through the next two things have to align with the truth of God's word. If they don't, I think we're kind of in dangerous territory. But a second way that God might bring an answer to you is through others. He might Bring an answer of prayer for wisdom through other people. Proverbs eleven fourteen says, Without wise leadership, a nation falls, but there is safety in many advisors. And so you hopefully are surrounded by people that can speak God's truth into your life. And I encourage you that what people say to you needs to also align with what God says. In the word of God. And the second, or the, sorry, the third way that God might answer prayer is through situations. You ever experienced doors opening and closing? You've got, you've, you've kind of made a decision and you're going in a certain way or there's a certain action that's required. And in that action, a door just closes. It's sort of in your face. It slams. You're like, whoa, that is not working out. And then another kind of direction that might just fly right open. And so there's those kind of through situations, through circumstance, God can open and close doors. Proverbs 16, 9 says, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Man, it's so good. I love that. Hey, what do you think it means to be a double-minded person? I suspect it looks like we will ask God as if God would answer, but then we don't really believe he will. The verses that we looked at, it, it said, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Do you know what? I really believe that these verses kind of revolutionize or they transform my prayer life. They reveal to me God's love for me, that he is for me. And I want to invite him into every situation and every moment of every day. How cool that God, I'm in relationship with him and 
he's interested in me and, and in you and he loves me and he loves you and he wants us to be talking to him, asking for wisdom and that he would guide through his word and through other people and through circumstance. And so he's ready and waiting to generously, unbridled, just pour out that wisdom upon you. So let's be people of prayer, asking, believing without doubt. Hey, school teachers, when you enter the classroom, ask God for wisdom. Office workers, as you walk through the door, ask God for wisdom. Tradies, as you kind of like strap on that apron, I don't know what it might look like, but as that happens, would you ask God for wisdom in all of your day? Those that care for people, when you're entering the homes of those that you care for, would you ask God for wisdom? Medical staff, would you ask God for wisdom as you kind of pace the wards and visit people? I don't know what your occupation, I don't know what your circumstance, but I do know that God wants us to ask for wisdom and that when we ask him for wisdom and we don't doubt, we believe that he will generously pour it out upon him. We will live lives that are a display of his beauty, of his goodness, of his love, as he guides and directs all of our steps. Asking God for wisdom is evidence that we trust God. Thanks so much, church. I hope this has been an encouragement to you. I hope, it, I hope it's been a blessing to you, and I look forward to catching up with you in person real soon. As we head into this next one, I feel like getting on my knees, and I'm going to get on my knees. And there's just a couple of things that I know on my heart that I want to be praying for. I want to be praying for the unity within our nation. I want to be praying for our leaders of our nation. I want to be praying over sickness and health. I want to be praying over marriages in this time. I want to be praying for our youth who face a new kind of struggle. But I want to pray, my biggest prayer, is that we would put our eyes on Him, the Maker, the Perfector, the Creator of the universe. That we would find rest in Him. With everything that is going on, that we would find rest in Him.
for I will give him rest. The Lord says, He is our shield. He is our provider. He is our strength. He is our joy. He gives us a peace that surpasses all understanding. He is with us in the highs and the lows. He is with us when we don't want him. He is with us in the mess. He celebrates us in the victory. We put our trust in you today. We lay our hearts before you, Lord. We take one step out of our comfort zone to trust you and have faith in you, Lord. Lead us, we pray. a lot of prayers I need to or someone's needing prayer well I feel like there's a lot of prayer that needs to be happening today and as we just continue to play I'm going to play another song I just ask that you just go and pray for someone pray with someone you would ask for prayer I feel like the spirit's prompting you today to be like really need covering over this one. We really need to go and pray for someone. So just in this space, in this safe space we were at, if you're feeling prompted to go and pray for someone, pray with someone or ask someone to pray with you, pray that we would do that.
so much that wherever we may be watching from, that you are meeting us exactly where we are at. We thank you so much for the truth in these songs, the truth in this prayer, the truth in the word, Lord. We thank you so much that there is nothing that can separate us from you. So, Father, I just really want to pray for healing where that needs to happen, Lord. I just want to lift up Roger Munn to you, Lord. And I just really pray, Father, for peace over him right now in this time. Father, I pray for strength, Lord. I just want to pray for Ben and Ainsley with their new baby, Lord. I pray for Rodney. And I pray a covering over him, Lord. I pray a strength in Ainsley and Ben. Enjoy this beautiful gift of a, a newborn baby, Lord. I want to pray, Lord Jesus, for the people that are in our community that are feeling disconnected, Lord, that are feeling just uncertain, Lord. I just really pray that you would comfort them, Lord, at this time, that you would bring peace to them, Lord. And as they're watching this, Father, I thank you so much that they are a part of this body, Lord. We thank you so much that the unity, Lord, the unity that is in you, Lord, the bond of peace that is in you, Lord, that nothing can separate us from you. And as we are watching from wherever we are, Lord, we are still connected through the Christ, through the body, through what you have done, we are connected. And so, Father, I just really want to pray for our whanau, Lord. I pray, Lord, that they would just lift up a shout of praise to you in this time, Lord. They would would raise their hallelujah, Lord. That as you are meeting them, as you are speaking to them, as you are encouraging them today, Lord, that they would lift up a shout of praise, knowing that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, that you are with them, Lord. And so, Father, as we have prayed with each other, as we have interceded for each other, Lord, I thank you so much that you hear that, that your heart hears that. I just really pray, Father, that your will will be done, Lord. That you would provide, Lord, that you would give us what we need, not what we want. We thank you so much that you are a generous God whose ear is inclined to us, Lord. But we put our hearts before you, Lord, and we say, your will be done, Lord. Have your way. like prayer if you're online and you're doing on prayer if you like prayer here we would love to stick around and just pray together 
worship together, lift up their praise, lift up their hallelujah, get on our knees together and intercede for each other. But if you would like to have a prayer, please click on the chat, love prayer. Um, But it was great joining us. Thank you for joining us here this morning. But we'll see you next week as we continue on our James series as well. Lift Jesus here, love.